Our InSight lander measured and recorded a likely Mars quake. Our Mars helicopter technology was put through some rigorous testing in preparation for its launch on the Mars 2020 rover mission. Also taking that ride will be more than 10 million names of Earthlings etched on dime-sized microchips installed on the rover. It was a milestone year for humans in space. We began our 20th consecutive year with humans aboard the International Space Station and conducted several important spacewalks, including the first ever by an all-woman team of spacewalkers, a series of complex spacewalks to repair a cosmic ray detector, and an outing to help install a new docking adapter to accommodate future arrivals of various spacecraft, including commercial crew spacecraft built by Boeing and SpaceX. Ignition, lift off. The SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft made the first ever docking to the International Space Station during its uncrewed flight test for NASA's commercial crew program. Meanwhile, NASA and Boeing are learning lessons from the uncrewed test flight of Boeing's CST-100 Starliner, which launched on December 20th, but was unable to dock with the space station. Five successful commercial cargo missions with Northrop Grumman and SpaceX delivered more than 32,000 pounds of science investigations, spacewalking tools, and critical supplies to the station. A new policy was announced in 2019, making the space station available for commercial business ventures. And results from our landmark twins study of astronaut brothers Mark and Scott Kelly were published. Data from the study could help maintain crew health during exploration missions to the moon and Mars. Lots of happenings in our solar system and beyond. Our New Horizons spacecraft rang in the new year with a record-breaking flyby of a Kuiper Belt object 4 billion miles from our sun. We announced a new mission to Saturn's icy moon Titan to search for the building blocks of life. Our Sophia Airborne Observatory detected helium hydride, the first type of molecule to ever form in the universe, in a planetary nebula some 3,000 light years away from us. We helped capture the first ever image of a black hole and its shadow. Data from our Hubble Space Telescope showed water vapor for the first time in the atmosphere of a planet outside our solar system that resides in the habitable zone. Researchers hope to further study three new worlds discovered by our test spacecraft 73 light years from Earth, a nearly Earth-sized one next to two others known as many Neptunes. The first data shared from super-close, record-breaking flybys of our Sun by NASA's Parker Solar Probe revealed new insights into solar dynamics that can affect astronauts and technology in space. Take us away. And we air-launched a mission to help us better understand the physical processes at play in the ionosphere that are potentially detrimental to radio communications, satellites, and the physical health of astronauts. Highlights from the world of space technology include the launch of several NASA technology demonstrations aboard a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket. The demonstrations are designed to test less toxic fuel for spacecraft, new ways to navigate in space, processes affecting space communications, and to look at the space environment around Earth and how it affects us. Three free-flying robots sent to the space station on north of Grumman's Cygnus spacecraft will help develop and test technologies for use in zero gravity and do routine chores so astronauts can do other important tasks. Our 3D printed Habitat Challenge featured teams combining creativity and cutting-edge technology to manufacture sustainable shelters for use on exploration missions, including to the Moon and Mars. We had another amazing year observing Earth from space. Cameras outside the International Space Station captured views of Hurricane Dorian, which reached Category 5 status and devastated the northern Bahama Islands. We used data from a Japanese satellite to produce a map for use by officials to assess damage from two strong earthquakes that rattled Southern California. Our Earth-observing Terra satellite captured images of California's devastating Kincaid fire. The blaze was fueled by nearly 100 mile per hour winds, known as Diablo winds. And a next generation high resolution imaging suite sent to the space station to identify materials on Earth's surface, whether they be natural or human made, could be used for resource exploration, agriculture, forestry, and other environmental areas. In flight, we continued groundbreaking research to help develop a new improved global aviation system. 
This included our X-57 Maxwell aircraft, which uses an electric propulsion technology that could increase efficiency while decreasing emissions and noise. Meanwhile, our X-59 Quiet Supersonic Technology project successfully completed in-flight testing of software and imaging technology that enables pilots to safely maneuver the skies without a forward-facing window. And we conducted the final and most complex season of flight tests for our Unmanned Aircraft Systems Traffic Management Project, or UTM, which seeks to integrate drones safely and efficiently into air traffic that is already flying in low-altitude airspace. And there they are, the men of Apollo 11, immortalized in bronze. Our historic accomplishments were a big focus in 2019. Our celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon mission included a NASA TV special and a series of other events around the country. The historic Apollo mission operations control room was restored so that visitors can see the room exactly as it appeared during the Apollo moon missions. And we held a ceremony to rename the street in front of our headquarters in Washington, D.C. to Hidden Figures Way in honor of the women who performed vital math calculations in the early days of America's space program. Those are some of the highlights from 2019, the year at NASA. For more details, visit nasa.gov 2019. Happy holidays, thanks for watching, and we look forward to sharing more exploration and discoveries with you in 2020. Hi, I'm Nikki Fox, and I'm in charge of all sun science here at NASA. This is Ask NASA, and I'm here to answer your questions. Is the sun a ball of fire? No, it's not. We know that the sun can't be a ball of fire because we need oxygen to be able to have combustion, and there's no oxygen in space. The sun, however, is a giant nuclear furnace. The core in the very center is very, very similar to a nuclear reactor. And all of the, these particles get squashed together and there's a huge amount of pressure. And they go undergo chemical reactions. And so there are very different layers as you move out towards the edge of the sun. Why does NASA send missions to the sun? Because the sun is the most important thing in our solar system. The sun generates light, but also a tremendous amount of energy, and it sends all of this material to us here on Earth. And so we live in the extended atmosphere of the sun. We've looked at the sun in every different wavelength, but recently, NASA launched the Parker Solar Probe, which is a daring mission to go into the very atmosphere, the very heart of the atmosphere of the sun. So I have a model of the Parker Solar Probe spacecraft here. Could I get some sun in here, please? So the important thing is as the spacecraft moves around the sun, the heat shield has to remain pointed towards the sun at all times. So the heat shield, the front of the heat shield will get to about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, but the main body of the spacecraft is nice and cool at about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a bit like a balmy Florida evening in August, I guess. And that's Parker Solar Probe. Thank you. Good. <laughs> I don't know how polite you are. So one of the things that we discovered with Parker Solar Probe on the very first orbit was switchbacks. Switchbacks. If only I had a model of the corona. Ah, oh, thank you. So switchbacks are really reversals in the material coming from the sun. So the sun has a magnetic field and that is continually moving away, or so we thought, continually moving away from the sun. But what we found with Parker Solar Probe is this magnetic field actually kind of reverses on itself and makes an S shape, and we call that a switchback. It's hard to twist a magnetic field. It's like trying to twist a rubber hose. It's hard, and so somehow there's this energy going into the, the magnetic field that's causing this S shape, and when it releases, it's letting all of this excess energy out into the solar wind. Thank you. Studying the sun is really important as we get ready to support the Artemis mission. We're really protected here on the planet by our magnetic field and all of that atmosphere around us. Our astronauts, when they will be on the moon, 
And of course, as we journey further to Mars and beyond, we'll be traveling through the solar wind and living really more in the atmosphere of the sun. And so it's key as we go forward to the moon, to Mars and beyond with our Artemis mission, that we really understand the source of energy in the heart of our solar system. Parker Solar Probe on her final closest approach after she's done all of those Venus flybys. She will be at about 3.9 million miles above the sun's surface. We have many materials on Parker Solar Probe that don't melt despite how close they are to the sun. In fact, that was one of the big technology challenges for us to find materials not only that don't melt, but can actually withstand the incredible change in temperature because Parker goes very close to the sun and then comes out around the orbit of Venus, which means that all these materials go really hot and then really cold at least 24 times. So the critical thing for Parker Solar Probe, of course, is to keep that heat shield pointing at the sun. At some point, she will run out of fuel. At that point, unfortunately, she will start to turn and the full illumination of the sun will hit parts of the spacecraft that are not designed to see the sun. And so she'll break up into large pieces and then they will get gradually smaller and smaller until they become really tiny. And so I like to think that she will become part of the corona and she will orbit the sun forever. So honestly, we don't know what new science we're going to expect. We've already seen unbelievable stuff on our first couple of orbits. Science is a voyage of discovery, and that is what Parker Solar Probe is doing. She is going into a region where we've never been before. And so honestly, we expect the unexpected. My favorite aspect about the sun is it's a star and it's a star that we can go and visit. And so you think, you know, you look up in the night sky, you see all of those stars and yet we're actually sending a spacecraft right into the atmosphere of a star right now. And that means we're going to understand more about other stars in our universe. And that's amazing. Do you have a question for NASA? Send your questions to our experts on Twitter using hashtag AskNASA.